right, so Dumpy's feeling a little springier. That's good. We've got those spring hangers replaced. You may remember when we were looking at that, we spun that wheel and discovered that uh, it's making a noise. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead while we got a little more time before I have to take it up the mountain. I'm gonna pull this wheel off, pull the drum off, take a look at the brake behind, and then we'll also check out the uh, bearings. They probably need repacking because this thing is so old. <laughs> This is a 1967 Ford F600, okay? And the dust cap for the wheel bearings um, on some of these larger things, uh, this one has threads and you see that it unscrews. So all you do is take a pair of channel lock pliers or maybe even water pump uh, pliers or something like that, just wrap it around, twist it off. As you can see in the past, somebody thought that this was one that gets, uh, you know, wiggled off like some of the smaller vehicles will have. You would just grab it with a piece, just bite it with a piece of channel locks and just wiggle it off until it comes out. Not the case on this one, it's threaded, so. Uh, yours may vary, but that's mine. And with the cotter pin out, as I suspected, the nut is just hand tight. Okay, so pulled off the nut, and there's a washer in there that has a groove in it that goes in that bolt. And then uh, the first bearing race came out. I just sort of wiggled wiggle the the whole wheel and hub off you can do that you can pull them off together you can do that in the back too uh, if you can manage the weight but um, I'm gonna try to pull this whole thing off wheel and hub and all the hubs not coming off very easily it's because I probably need to adjust the brakes uh, downward you know retract the shoes a little bit and this is the hole to do it in there's a there's a little wheel in there that has like cogs in it to fit the end of your screwdriver. So you stick it in there and you can just go like that. You'll do it by feel. I mean, I doubt if you'll be able to see it. Oh, there she comes. Oh, I'm afraid to look. <laughs> it's a neoprene dust seal which tells me it's that this seal's been replaced before, obviously, because the old ones were made out of some kind of fabric. And there's a bearing inside. And the hub's got some grease in it. And let's take a look at the drum itself. This is not pretty at all. Not at all. Got some serious grooves in there. And I'll bet you that this thing is way out of spec and i'll bet you also that i cannot get a replacement for this drum i might be able to, might be able to but i i couldn't it was really hard to find replacements for the rear and i wound up not buying them because they were so expensive but uh the front i don't know maybe i got lucky who knows i mean we've got some material left on them but it's getting a little thin there like I said, when we were doing the rear axle on this, and I'll put a link to that video uh, in the, at the end here so you could see that one if you want to. But uh, like I said in that video, for as much as we're going to use this truck, you know, maybe a few hundred miles a year on it, um, I don't want to do too much to it. If I can't replace the drums, then I at least want to replace the shoes and get some more material on them here to give me some better braking power so you know in a perfect world you definitely want to replace you know uh replace the shoes uh yeah and replace the drum but a truck this old um the real world is that uh, you often can't find this stuff anymore so Let's see what we can do okay well, here's the other side the uh, shoes aren't as bad on this side. I'll reline them anyway. But one thing that I didn't see on the out on the back 
that I can clearly see here now is that we've got a leaking brake cylinder, wheel cylinder. So we'll get that replaced while we're in here. The, uh, the drum on this side isn't nearly as bad as the other side, although it's still worn and probably out of spec. I don't know what this is about. This is the brake line that goes to the wheel. And for some reason, I guess they lost the nut where it passes through that bulkhead fitting through the frame. You know, that bulkhead fitting. Okay. So, let's see if I can find a nut that'll go over that. And finally, after three and a half weeks away at the friction shop, <laughs> folks, that's how it is when you live remotely. Um, it takes a while to get stuff in. And now you know why, you know, farmers who own vehicles like this, if you're, if you're doing harvest, you don't have three weeks to sit around or two weeks or even probably two days. You don't have to sit around and wait uh, you know for a part to come in for your truck so you can do it right so you weld the crap together uh, you know thinking I'll f I'll get it all fixed up later and then you never do okay. so next will be this little dude right here gotta go on like that Make sure that's in there and make sure your springs are on and those things are at 90 degrees to the end of the pin. This, this is the adjustment screw. And when it goes in, it goes like this because you want to line up that cog wheel with this slot so you can do your adjustment. Uh, oh, look at that. There's a little bird. There's his shadow right there. He's right above me. He's right on top of the jack there. Let me see if I can get a picture of him before he goes. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> that's known as a says phoebe they are thick out here in this part of the country they fly up from mexico every year for the summer i'm going to clean all this up really well you don't need to lubricate it you just need to make sure it's nice and clean so that it spins freely so i'll do that before we put this back together okay so as for the springs there are two top springs look like this you notice this one has like a little rise in the spring material let's so it can go over this okay so what you do is you take this end put it in this hole like this and then bring it around and stretch it over that little stud up there we get a lot of biting flies out here this time of year so always keep this stuff handy because i do not like being bitten by biting flies i have a brake spring tool around here somewhere from when I did the rear brakes on this thing, but I'm too lazy to go find it. <laughs> There's a screwdriver. Let's see if we can get that to work. Get the ammo. Ah. Well, you're just being a pill. Okay. Typical brake job. This thing wants to spin. It spins around that bolt and then it, the spring comes off so get on there okay so I cleaned up this adjuster uh, you should not need see how freely that spins you should not need to uh, put any kind of lubricant or anything on and I wouldn't recommend it okay so this is weird I, I, I hooked this end in first and I was able to stretch it out and get it through but uh, look at this. I, it, I don't know. I, I really need to look at the specs to the drawings, the original drawings to see if this is appropriate. But it looks like in this case, the spring is the keeper <laughs> for this uh, for this adjuster. So it's weird. Oh. Okay, okay, so this wheel's back together. Remember, check, make sure that your tabs are in place, especially up here, because all that could have worked loose while you were working on stuff. And uh, we'll do the other wheel, then we'll turn our attention to the drums and bearings. Okay, so when I went to spray the brake parts cleaner on this brake backing disc, all the paint peeled off. Because <laughs> this 
I don't know, this thing was leaking and you may remember this thing was covered in dirt and um, brake fluid and stuff like that. Okay, so the, on the end of this brake line, there is a copper washer, okay? Copper washers are used to prevent leaks. So make sure you do not lose that. Well, it's the same number, same part. Uh, same orifice down inside, but the thread size is different. So let's talk about this for a minute because these two cylinders, here's the one that was on the truck, here's the replacement that I found online. These have the very same number, okay? This is LH-FE-34074. This is LH-FE-34074. But there are some important differences with these. One would be this thread size. And that is a 7 8 bore. This round plunger right here. 7 8 in diameter. Okay, That's the one that was on the truck. Here's the one that I'm putting on the truck. This is an inch and a quarter bore. This is your braking power here. Okay, so if this has a larger bore and can apply more, um, can distribute more pressure across the brake shoes than this one, then you're gonna have a difference in braking power. That may be part of the reason why <clears throat> after I installed the right wheel, um, the thing pulled to the right a little bit, even though I adjusted both sides, the brakes on both sides after I did that. So there you go. Uh, just because the numbers are the same, doesn't mean that they're the same. I didn't really want to do this, but I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to drill this out and tap it to the same size as the old one so that we can we can get it on there. Oh, I'm so not happy. Got the thing set up and the vise clamped down, I hope, strongly enough. And uh, got the drill bit set up. Everything's ready to go. We'll drill, try to drill this and tap it. A little bit of WD for oil. Let's see what we get. Oh, I do not like this. Look at the run out on that bit. Should be plenty deep and we should have maintained our little orifice which we did um the run out on this drill press is quite sloppy so i have a it's, it's not gonna be a perfect hole but i should be able to get it tapped and set no problem okay so got the hole drilled now i'm gonna tap it and here's my tap just being real easy turn it some and then back it off a little and turn it some more and back it off a little and turn it some more and back it off a little okay and moment of truth here so it goes all the way in and it bottoms out uh, on this uh on this little shoulder flange whatever you want to call it that's important because uh this fitting uh even though it's an inverted flare fitting there's no flare in the inside and so i need to make sure that this nut um goes flat with the um with the little base there because uh that and a copper washer is what's going to hold back uh leaking so good looks like we're good all right now let's get this puppy put back together turning our attention to the hubs now we got to uh grease the bearings and let me show you this i don't know if you can hear that you hear that scraping Some bearings full of crud or something so uh uh i gotta get this seal off I'm gonna replace the seal I'm gonna repack the bearings make sure the bearings are okay repack them you know usually to pull a seal like this, they make a tool that's sort of shaped like a sickle with points on the ends and a bar that sticks up perpendicularly from it. And you hook one of the pointy ends under there and just pull it and leverage just sort of peels it out of there. But 
What fun is that? Uh, and I don't have one of those. So, use a couple screwdrivers here. We'll stick one here. And I'll just go around and peel and, you know, just sort of gradually pry it up. Uh, it'll work if you just work your way around. Uh, it'll come out of there eventually. We got her out of there. That looks really gross and chunky in there. Check that bearing and make sure it's okay. It's greased. But boy, it sounds terrible. I'll clean it up, look at it. I'm sure it'll be okay. Um, and then I'll clean the uh, front race. Get this hub cleaned up. Just get some fresh grease in there. Get this thing put back on. So a little bit of parts cleaner and a... Um, a nylon brush, you know, just to get in here and scrub out this bearing race. Inside the hub, there was a bunch of grease. I just scooped it out with my fingers and got rid of it. There's only one reason you would leave grease in there, and that's because you're lazy. The bearing, here's the, here's the uh, inner bearing. It's okay. Um, it, they sound okay. Not too scored up. Races look okay. So I'll, uh, I'll clean these up some more, pack them. And then uh, we'll get this one in there, get the seal on. Then we'll turn it over and do the other side. Oh, one other thing. I've got to clean up this braking surface here. I'm just going to clean them, scuff them up a little bit so that they have some bite, so that the new shoes have some bite. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm just using a sanding pad, like I showed. I also have some 220 grit sandpaper here I'll use. I'll clean them up. This is a messy job packing bearings you might remember in the video we did when we uh did the rear hubs and bearings uh brakes and bearings that uh i used a special tool i found at auto parts store it was like a cone shaped thing with a zert fitting on it where you pump grease into it and then it fills the cavity and eventually pushes itself inside the bearing well that thing wasted a lot of grease and it was just as messy as this anyway um but it wasted a lot of grease and uh so i thought i'd go back to on this one i'd just go ahead and pack these by hand um what you want to do is in these grooves here and front and back back is better because it's bigger and you can smoosh more stuff into it like that just go around and smoosh it in there force it in there and the idea is that it forces the grease up into the cages around the bearings and when it eventually smooshes out the top or whatever you know your bearings are fully packed although <laughs> i don't think you're going to get it to come out the top no i mean trying to do that is kind of it's tough but if you get enough grease in there that's all that's really important so. you have to put it on the top side too yeah i'll put, it, I'll put some on the top side too see just like that just like that, little dab do you? <laughs> I know, it's nasty. But it feels good in the hands, Grease says. It does? Yeah, it's smooth. Ew. I mean, it's like one quarter moisturizing cream, right? No, it looks like <laughs> gross blood. Gross blood. This red grease is, this is that uh, Lucas grease. So you just keep smashing it in there. So what are all the little people who don't like us using petroleum and petroleum byproducts going to do about this? What are you talking about? It's grease. It's made from oil. Yeah? What about it? Well, it's bad for the environment, and we're running out and all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're running out, but yeah. You know, Robert, all you need to do is just trust. Just trust the powers that be. Okay. Be like, be like Boxer. The, uh, the I think it was, that was his name, the horse in uh, Animal in George Orwell's Animal Farm. Napoleon is always right. Huh? I will work harder. It's always advisable to have a seal uh, punch or driver, whatever they call it. That's the same diameter as preferably the outer edge of your seal. Uh, I don't have that. I've got all the wrong tools out here living off grid in the middle of nowhere. So I just placed it very evenly and carefully on, in the hole knowing that it's tight, and then I gently tapped it with a very small hammer. Just gently, until it met, until it meets evenly with this edge of the hub. Okay. Avoid using the hammer like this, try to go flat. 
just nice and gently. Okay, so I wiped most of the crud out on this side. I crammed a rag down in there first because I got a clean bearing and everything on the other side. The inside of the hub's clean, so I don't want to throw dirt and, and parts cleaner and crap down in there. So now I'll just clean this up. Okay, so one final check of the uh, spindle and hub here. Make sure everything's together. Um, I did put a little grease over here, inside here, where that seal will ride against there. And I put a little bit on the threads. So when I screw that castle nut back on, it makes it a little easier. Let's get the hub on. Okay. So we press the, push the, the drum on, put the, uh, put a little grease around the, uh, outer race push the bearing in this nut with its little key wraps around the thing there and then a castle nut goes on there now if you are replacing if you're just putting back the existing bearings there really is no need to torque this uh, because the bearings should already know their way uh, in their races and the races are pushed in and seated and all that kind of stuff So you shouldn't need to what I'm gonna do however Is I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this with a wrench pretty tight Once I get it tight and I know that the hubs in there good. I'm gonna back it off I'm gonna back off the nut and then retighten it to hand tight uh, insert Insert my cotter pin through the castle nut, through the hole in the hub uh, to hold that thing in place, and we should be good to go. Okay, those gaps in the uh, dust cap that, you know, when I screwed it on and looked in there, I could see the washer and grease. So I thought, I got to keep dust from, I mean, the purpose of this thing is to keep dirt out. So I just took a little black RTV and crammed it in those spaces. And uh, it's not ideal, but it'll keep the dust out. So, let's check it out. No more noise like it was making before. That's good. I'll walk out here next year and say, did I do those brakes on the front of that F600? <laughs> and I'll see the paint and I'll say, well, I painted it, so I must have. And you want to make sure that the bearings in their races properly and stuff like that so while you're tightening just spin it and then in this case where I've got existing bearings not new the existing bearings that I'm just putting back back it back off till it's loose so I can spin it on with my hand using this socket hey, you dogs do understand that in agreeing to come on this trip where we test the brakes that you are taking your life in your hands, right? In your paws. Do you agree to this? Huh, Roscoe? Do you agree? Tail wag says yes. Reba, do you agree? Do you? I don't see a tail wagging. Do you agree? No, but you want to stay anyway. Okay. Okay, so we've got uh, Dumpy ready to go. Uh, we bled the brakes the old fashioned way, you know, where Robber holds down the pedal while I loosen the bleed screw, let it bleed, tighten it up, and then she releases the. Did that two, twice. 
one round and I went driving and the pedal still felt a little mushy. So uh, bled them again and yeah, sure enough, there's a little bit of air in the lines in the line for the left front. So I uh, got everything bled out properly um, and then went around, uh, drove it a bit, went around and readjusted the brakes. Even though I'd already adjusted them once, I figured I'd do it again and it needed it. So while I was at it, I readjusted the rear brakes too, even though they didn't really need it. Um, and, but I just to make sure and uh, topped off the fluids. And now Dumpy is ready to go up the mountain and get some more timber which we got to get done this year. So I uh, hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.